as she comes to court to pray. Please pray with me.
much as I don't work and have the appreciation for it, and I'm not going to steal some of the stuff. I'm just going to share it. for our October birthdays on the 8th we have Someone whose kindness and sense of humanity serves to make our days just that much brighter. Someone who reminds us of Jesus and his goodness and his capacity to reach out to others. A gentle man who takes the time to extend his hand and open his 
hearts to all those in need. Someone who, like the shepherd, tends to his flock, young and old, with love and devotion. And the flock, in turn, willingly follows the shepherd's lead, knowing in their hearts that he was sent to guide them, and his love and his wisdom to the greenest of all pastures. Such a man you are, and we are grateful and blessed by your presence in our lives.
about the children and he talks about how they are so willing he compares children talking to the disciples he compares the children uh, with adults so what he does he, he, he gives up us a lesson through the children about forgiveness <coughs> because Jesus knew that you as children are so willing to forgive. You're always willing to forgive. You, you, you may disagree and get upset with each other, but turn around the next moment, you're hugging and laughing and carrying on, just like nothing ever happened. So Jesus compares the children with adults. He says, unless you become as you are, unless we as adults, become as you are, we can in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. At this, he, you are a reflection, you are a live example. When we look at you, or when I look at you, I see a live example of what forgiveness really is through looking at you. I know that you're all in school and you come up with different uh, uh, circumstances and different uh, situations that come up in school, but you are willing to carry on and forgive and you go right back the next day. What an example for us. What an example you are for us. So we are encouraged just to watching you, watching I am, just being able to watch you and, and know what you're dealing with, and yet you're able to continue on. Yeah. So we're going to pray your strength that you will continue on there. As you grow, uh -huh. yeah. this same spirit that you have as children yeah. will grow with yeah. you. Yeah. That when you become someone like me, old and bald-headed, <laughs> that you will be able to forgive <laughs> and, and forget and go on. And look to the Lord for strength. Amen. 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 God bless you all. I your heart.
verses 15 to 20. And I will be coming from the NIV Bible, the New Open Bible, and the New King James Version. Thus saith the word. And it's talking about an offended brother. And it says, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear you, take with you one or two more, that my mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Surely, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Again, I say to you, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For were two or three are gathered, for were two or three are gathered together in my name, I am, I am there in the midst of them all. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Amen.
land. Yeah. Amen. 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 And I truly we give honor to God this morning and uh, to the ministry of staff here at Union and to all of you under the sound of my voice uh, this morning and to you also that are watching my uh, way we, of Facebook. We greet you this morning uh, in the only name that matters and that is in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I was a little slow getting myself together. Somebody called these real blow. It got an inside pocket in it. And I put my mic in it and it went all the way to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't hit the pocket. <laughs> so, but anyway, we thank God and we praise God for uh, uh, another uh, time that he has blessed us with. And I want you to know that we, on our um, anniversary and vacation, we had a wonderful time. Uh, we enjoyed each other. We just had a glorious time. Amen. Amen. You all, but we did catch up with you on Facebook. We, we, we were watching, but uh, well, we uh, thank God that uh, He allowed us to get back. You know, we drove uh, in, uh, in driving, so you know how treacherous it is on the highway. But uh, well, we had a chauffeur, uh, and he did a pretty good show. <laughs> uh, he, he took care of us. So, so we thank God uh, for your prayers, and we also thank God for. Thinking of us in the gifts uh, as we went out on our anniversary and the and, uh, Amen. 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 Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Somebody give God the highest praise. season you're in. So, so in the season that I'm in, this word, this word from Matthew 18 mm -hmm. encouraged me. Mm -hmm. And my prayer to you for you this morning is that this word will encourage you. You know, as we continue on our journey, on this journey that God has uh, placed at our hands, that that we might serve him, that we might be the ministry, that we might do ministry that he would have us to do. So uh, when I when I looked at the sermon, I was dealing with some things things going through my mind, even when we were on uh, vacation and, and anniversary. Being that we are independent now, I, I, I had to refocus my thoughts on a lot of, lot of stuff. And, 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 and it, it, it took a trip. <laughs> to New York to be able to get this thing together. So I, I so I as I looked at the text and and, and even when I was uh, on the on the anniversary I looked at the text and studied the text, God revealed to me some things that would help me. And I pray and I know it will help you when we apply it as God has given it to us in his word. Amen. 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 Father God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, you're my strength and my redeemer. The Lord, let me decrease and you decrease that your word might go forth and do what it was designed to do, and that is to crush the head of the enemy. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And, and for a thought, <clears throat> for a thought this morning, I, I, I titled uh, uh, this uh, message dealing with sin related conflict mm -hmm. dealing with sin related conflict mm -hmm. and and in the beginning we, we see that in the beginning of Matthew Matthew is talking about uh, the greatest in the kingdom mm -hmm. the greatest who is the greatest in the kingdom yeah. of God and, and if you when you read it you'll find out that he was referring to children mm -hmm. they are who the greatest in the kingdom of God. Then he goes on in where we are today 
uh, verses 15 through 20, he talks about sin and forgiveness. Sin and forgiveness. Uh, somebody say sin, sin. and forgiveness. Amen. 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 Matthew 18, verses 15 through 20. It describes the process that Jesus gives to the disciples. And he gives this to the disciples who are dealing with sin-related conflict among a group of believers. Now, now he, Jesus gives this to his disciples. That they might be able to deal with sin-related issues among believers. Those that are not believed, but among those that are in the house. Yeah. Oh, help me, somebody. Yeah. So the first step that that, that, that is uh, for the one who is wrong. Read, read, read the text, and, and I, I'm sure that it will help you because I know that we all deal with it. We, we do, and, and and as long as I've been I've been in church all my life, and I, and I think I don't I don't ever recall anyone speaking on this issue. But but it had to be important because Jesus gave it to his disciples. Yeah. So he says here he says the first step is the, for the one who is wrong to go and speak privately with the one who has sin and you do it in hopes of restoring a relationship. So the main word in this sentence for me would be privacy. Help me somebody. Would be privacy because it's hard for some of us to speak privately when we feel we have been wrong. Some of us, uh, not all of us, feel that we should share it with as many as possible. Come on, am I on your street or somebody? I'm on my own street. So, so in verses 18 through 20, Christ pledges that the decisions of believers arrive at and through a process of uh, a premonition of the decision that a decision come from God. Christians reach an accord or settlement through the mutual agreement of the offended parties or the church exercises the power of excommunication based on two or three witnesses. Now look, look, now look, this is not my word. This is what Jesus said. So don't look at me like that. I, I, you, you're looking at me strange this morning. But, but Jesus, look, look, go to the 18th chapter of Matthew. Jesus is talking here. And, 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 and in Matthew 18, it says that the passage is about the authority. It's about authority of the local church to pass judgment on unrepentant sinners. On those that are just determined not to be right. Oh, help me somebody. I know we don't have anybody here, but we got some that are determined to have it their way. They think that it's Burger King all day long. So he says, you can bind and loose. Referring to the judicial authority of gathered Christians to decide cases on the basis of God's law. And most scholars thus recognize that this passage applies to Christian discipline. To pray binding and loosen. I bind sickness and disease released against my mind or body, and I bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I loose 
in my mind the will and the emotions from every assignment and spirit of darkness. And I do this in the name of Jesus Christ. I loose my conscience from all guilt and condemnation, legalism, and religious bondage. And I do all this in the name of Jesus Christ. So bind and loose in prayer is a heavenly authority given to believers now seen in Matthew 18, verses 18 to 20. With the, with the principle of binding and loosing, which means to, to forbid or to permit. Yeah. Binding and loosing is a transfer. It's a transfer, my brothers and sisters, of authority from eternity into time. It is a legal right. You have the legal right to use that power that has been authorized by none other than God, but God. He's given you the authority to loose and bind. My God. What an authority he has given us. That whatever is not of his will, we don't have to put up with no stuff. We can bind and lose whatever is not in his will. We can bind it according to his will. Matthew 18 deals with sin in the church. And the process of discipline. Jesus sets forth four steps. Four steps. Step a, a four step process of church discipline. And I know that we have our discipline. And we have our bylaws, but Jesus has his. Amen. And I believe his overrides ours. Amen. Oh, help me, somebody. And, and he says, first thing, he says in the text, read the text. He says, tell him or her his sin alone. And then number two, he says, take some witnesses. He said, you don't want to go by yourself. And then number three, he said, tell the church. And number four, he said, if they don't hear the church, treat or him or her as an outsider. Heavy stuff, isn't it? So Jesus tells his disciples. And I believe he's telling us to personally approach the wrongdoer and comfort him or her in love. Now this is something. This is something else. This is not an easy task. But he didn't say it would be easy. <laughs> he just gave it to us. He didn't say it would be easy. So we, we go to them and we and, and, and we and we approach the wrong door and we comfort him or her in love. And if the person uh if the person will not listen, then we are to take a committee with us. Don't run next door. Don't run all around the neighborhood. They said, look what they done to me. <coughs> oh, pity me. No, he said, take, take a committee. He said, only when this has been done are we free to bring the matter to the attention of the congregation. You can't bring it to the attention of the church until you have taken two or three witnesses to validate what is going on. Yeah. He said they take it to the congregation or the church. The prayer that breaks soul ties. I bring the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ. I bring it between me and the person that I'm 
in disagreement with. As Galatians 9 and 14 says, I have been crucified to whoever it is. And they have been crucified to me. So by the cross of Jesus Christ, I break every soul tie and every ungodly bind with this person in the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew 18 follows the action of the previous chapter where Jesus is teaching uh, of several issues. And these include humility, as I've stated, as he's using the example of a child. And Jesus also teaches about avoiding sin and offering forgiveness to others. God's call for us is to be the peacemaker. We ought to be the peacemaker. Uh, no, 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 we're not, we're not to instigate and, and bring home confusion and chaos, but we are to be peacemakers. What he said, what he said, uh, in Matthew, he said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The Bible does not tell us to continue in relationship with people who have damaged us or are still damaging us. In fact, the scriptures are full of teachings instructing us to leave relationships with wicked or evil people. But Paul said, come out from among them and leave them, be separate from them to shun them as outcasts and purge them from your midst. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, Be not deceived. <coughs> Evil communications corrupt good manners. Do you hear what I said? Be not conceived that evil communication will corrupt good manners. And then he says in 1 Corinthians 5 and 11, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man uh, that is called a brother or a fornicator or a covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such one, uh, no, not to eat. So you not to even pray, pray with someone like that. Oh, come on, help me somebody. You're not to break bread with them. Oh, come on, somebody. But 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 see, but see, you're still you're still commanded to love them. Yeah. 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 It's not easy. It's not easy. Proverbs 17 and 5 and, and, and 5 says, a, a wicked doer giveth heed to false lips. And a liar giveth ear. To a naughty tongue. Help me, somebody. So, so when uh, comforting by an enemy, do your fighting in your prayer closet. <laughs> Remember, Jesus uh, uh, told us in Luke ten and nineteen, "I have given you the authority. I've given you this authority that you might trample on snakes." Uh, and scorpions, uh, and to overcome all the power of the enemy, and nothing uh, will harm you. I'm coming in. Matthew 18 and 20 describes the process Jesus gives to the disciples. He gives this to them for dealing with sin-related conflict among a group of believers. Or I believe today we can use it. He's given it to us to, to not so 
much uh, someone that uh, is uh, sin related, but someone that has uh, 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 done something against us, and uh, we're not we're not comfortable with what they said, or with what they said disturbs us. And if it disturbs you that much, the Spirit of the Lord told me, James, if it disturbs you that much, go to that person. Talk to that person. Let them know that they are, what they said offended you. And, and find out why, why, why did that, why was this happening? Why, why was I offended? And clear up the matter right there. I'm trying to help you as I help myself. The first step for the one who is wrong, is to go and speak privately. Uh, 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 Matthew, Jesus told his disciples to speak privately with the one who has sinned. And we do it in hopes of restoration. We, we do it in hopes of restoration of, of that relationship. And the main point of Matthew 18 is that Jesus provides a process for Christians, for us to deal with when we are dealing with a sin related issue or sin related conflict. He gave us this process. And my brothers and sisters, we must abide by this process. Because Jesus gave it to us and he gave it to us to use. The process was more as hard. Forget the process. Go on Facebook <laughs> and pull up the sermon. All right. <laughs> See, I don't know how I didn't get on what this man was saying, but pull up the sermon. <laughs> Confront the offender privately. The person who has wronged you should speak directly to the person who has sinned in an effort to restore the relationship, not to someone else. If I have an issue with Minister Hardy, it's my duty, according to the gospel of Jesus Christ, not to take it to everyone else, but go to her. Talk to her about the problem, that, the issue that I'm dealing with. Yeah. And we're going to get this matter cleared up. Yeah. Now, if we can't, then I go farther. But hopefully and prayerfully, I believe that we can straighten out whatever it is yeah. that we're having a difficult yeah. Yeah. time with. Yeah. So after you have done that, you involve others if needed. Mm. So you do it if, if others, if it's needed. Oh, yeah, 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 I agree. No, 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 no. You involve others as needed. And if the offender refused to repent, the wrong person should bring one or two into the conversation. And if that doesn't work, which it, it could be, you know, you know we're on strange territory. It might, it might happen. So if that happens, then we take it to the church. We take it to the council. We take it to the church council. To the church. And if the offender still refuses to prepare, the issue should be taken to, yeah, we take it to the assembly, and they still refuse to uh, uh, repent, then they should be, that person, that offender, should be treated as a consigner. You know, the King James Version said, as a heathen. The NIV, I think, says as as an outsider. I think I'm not sure, but but I knew I did not know King James said a heathen. So if the offender never repents, then that's when you consider them an outsider. And after you do that, my dear, my dear brother, and sister, after you've done all that, then you fall down on your knees or wherever you might be. And you pray yeah. for the offender. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. Christians should pray for the offenders. We pray for their healing. Yeah. Yeah. We pray that they might be healed and reconciled. We pray for reconciliation. Yeah. Jesus tells the disciples what they bind on earth and what they lose 
on earth is also bound or loose in heaven. So if you pray and you bind it on earth, Jesus said you are bind it in heaven and whatever is loose, you lose it in heaven. So this is both a start. It's a startling a grant of authority. And it's a warning that Jesus talks to his disciples. With authority come profound responsibility. Especially when the community represents God's presence and his power in the world. The Sermon of Matthew 18 to 15 if your brother or your sister is against you, go and show him or, or his uh, sin just between the two. And if he or she listens, then you have regained a brother. You have regained a sister. But if you but but if he or or, or will not listen, then you go to take it to others. So this emphasizes. The principles, the, or the principle that a, a that 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 a calm or 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 accusation should be considered valid only if supported by the evidence of at least two or three. Again, one witness shall not rise up against any man concerning any iniquity or any sin that he or she might commit. The Bible says by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. So I don't know whether this message helped you or not. But I will say that it has helped this little preacher. <laughs> because now I know what to do. I knew before, but now it's clear to me Amen. what to do as I continue on yes. in ministry. Amen. That I might be the man of God yes. that he has called me to be. Yes. And that I might do it not my way, but his way. And when I do it his way, he'll get all the glory. Yeah. Yeah. But if I do it my way, it's going to be all messed up. Yeah. I know it will. Amen. But when I do it his way, when you do it, church, the way that God has called us to do it, you don't have to worry about a thing. Get up and go about your daily business. Knowing that you have done what God has called you to do according to what he has given us in his word. Amen? Amen. God bless you.
that authority. He has given you that power. And what power you have. What power you have. At this moment, we want to extend the invitation. You know, my brothers and sisters, we know that we did not come here to stay. We know that one of these days, God is going to call our number. And I don't know, you don't know, this may be my last time. I don't know. But what I do know is that God has given me this day and this opportunity. That if there is anything that is not like him, that is not of his will, that he has given me the authority that I might get rid of it in my life. That I might hear him say when he calls my name, when he calls my name, well done. That's all I want to hear him say. Well done. Don't need no accolades. Don't need to know what I've done or how I did it. But just well done. All I want to hear is well done. And I'll be satisfied. If there is anyone, I'm going to ask that you would stand if you're able. If there is anyone, don't know the Lord. If there is anyone that has not accepted you,
says when two or three touch and agree yeah. on the same thing, yeah. that he would do it. Yeah. Now we got more than two or three here this yeah. morning. Yeah. So we're gonna we are going to declare that he's gonna do exactly yeah. what he said he's gonna do. Let us pray. Holy and all wise God, we come this morning just as humble as we know how. First of God, we pray, oh God, that you would forgive us of all our shortcomings. And we come on behalf of our brothers and sisters on the prayer list. God, we don't know what they're all going through. Some of it is physical. Some of it may be spiritual. But whatever it is, Lord, 
you know all about them. So God, you said in your word that any time two or three would touch and agree on the same thing, that you would do it. So God, we're lifting up these names this morning that you might touch, heal, and deliver. That you might bind the hand of the enemy right now. Oh God, we declare, oh God, we declare healing is in the name of Jesus. We declare deliverance right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We declare restoration right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Touch, heal, and deliver. Bind up broken wounds. Heal broken hearts. Touch organs right now. Regulate heart pressure right now. Dry up sugar diabetes right now. Heal cancer right now. In the name of Jesus. Touch rheumatism and arthritis, bronchitis, whatever it is. God, if we can have it, we believe you can heal it. So we give it to you this morning. Touch this list. All those that are in need, God, in the name of your Son, Jesus. And we thank you for it. We praise you for it right now. God, we're going to listen and we're going to wait on you. We're going to wait for the, for the report. For we believe it. We declare that the report is coming. That this prayer list will shrink. Because your healing hand is going to go for you. Of your people. Do it for your glory. Do it for your majesty. And we give your name the honor. We give your name the praise. For we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Our Lord said, Amen. Amen. Supper is found in your Bible, chapter 11, and I'll be reading from it, verse 23 to 34. Say amen when you come. All you're looking for. First Corinthians, chapter 11, starting at verse 23. Chapter 11, starting at verse 20. If you found it, say amen. If you not, say wait. Amen. I will wait. First Corinthians, chapter 11. Starting at verse 23. Amen. 
church. Amen. And it reads as thus. I am reading from the King James Version of the Bible. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had sipped, saying, This cup is the new testament of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do also the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest are set in order when I come. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord in heaven, how it be
brother and he wants to steward it in heaven, given it to him. Blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you on Calvary. The blood that reaches to the highest mountain, flows to the lowest valley. The blood gives you your strength. The blood never, never loses its power. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, take and drink.
your space and your family. We're going to pray in that your that your strength, that your family's strength in the Lord will increase while you go through this time of testing. Same as the psalmist said, earth has no song. Yeah. 
I, I mean, I know we're gonna we're gonna get there with all this modern technology. But but, but until we get there, yeah. would you do that for your pastor? Yes. Yeah. 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 I just don't. Hold you to it.
Thank you. 